second microphone. Yeah. Dave Wallace, um, he, him, and I'm just going to note that if you have, it, it's really hard to mix word counts in a foreign language with word counts in English, so I think it's much more likely that if the, the series was published originally in a different language, that it would qualify for the ballot initially just based on those portions that had been translated into English, and therefore it is very likely that works newly available in English would not have counted towards the original word count, and therefore should be considered as as new extensions to the series. That was the speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Joshua Cronin Gold up at the podium microphone. Joshua Cronin Gold, he, him. While I appreciate and agree with the intent of this amendment, it causes the overall result to be inconsistent. We should um, have uh, things go, if we are saying that um, a given series as extended has to stay in the same language, we should do that rather than say that you can nominate it and things that can qualify in another language and then re-qualify in English again. Okay, thank you, that was a speech against. Is there a speech in favor? Ben Yalo up at the podium. Ben Yellow, he, him, etc. cetera. Um, we already have lots of inconsistencies dealing with a bunch of special cases. We've got special cases for uh, what happens if some work gets into the, a series with uh, an extension for limited availability. We already have other interesting peculiarities. I see no reason to argue against this simply because it adds another perverse edge case. Our Constitution is full of perverse edge cases and we glory in them. Okay. That was a, sp oh dear, that was a speech in favor, right? Okay. I didn't mark it down on my little sheet. Okay. That was the speech in favor. Um, we're still doing good on the five minutes? Yeah, we're still fine. Okay. Uh, is there a speech against? See none. Is there additional speech in favor? Okay, we will move to a vote on the amendment. Uh, so to remind everyone, the amendment is to insert in English after any installments published. If you are in favor of the amendment, please raise the hand. Thank you. If you are against, I have no idea, so we're going to have to do a serpentine. Uh, the sergeant at arms will remind you what to do if you don't remember. Does everyone remember? How we do this? Does anyone, or does anyone not remember how to do this? <laughs> yes, okay, sorry. Terry, will you please explain it? All right, it? so what we're going to do is when the chair asks uh, if you agree, you will, uh, with, with the amendment, you will rise or raise your yellow card. And as I point to you, you will uh, say the next number. Uh, we're going to ask everyone to say a number and you will say the next number and then either lower your card or sit down. Any questions? Okay, one moment. Is there an issue? No. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment, uh, I'm gonna wait until the, you're able to find a seat so that there's not a lack of clarity. Sorry. Uh, all those in favor, please stand or raise your card.
39. Okay, all those against, please stand or raise your card. One moment. Uh. Okay, with 39 in favor and 29 against, the amendment passes. Uh, how much time do we have left on each side? We have about a minute 12 on each side. Okay. Uh, so the motion as amended, uh, now after any, it's. Uh, I'm sorry, is there a point of order or parliamentary inquiry in the body? Okay. Uh, the motion as amended now reads <coughs> any installments published in English in a year prior, et cetera. Uh, we have a little over a minute left on each side. The last speech was a speech against. Is there a speech in favor of the amended motion? Seeing none, is there a speech against? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. Those in favor of item D6 as amended, please raise the hand. Thank you. You can all put it down. Those against, and the motion passes. Okay. We are now going to move on to item D7, five and five on page nine. I'm gonna let everyone know it is currently 1225. We need to uh, be done and like done, done, like not we're just now leaving the room, but done at 1250. So I am hopeful that we can get through D7. Kate doesn't think we can. Motion to adjourn, Okay, there is a motion to adjourn, there is a second. Uh, although it's not debatable or amendable. Yeah, it is a day uh, oh, it, it is a incidental main motion. So yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's been a day. Yeah. Okay. Is there any debate? Uh, In, uh, Todd Dashoff. Um, no. You can't. However, the body now knows you want to do that and can use that to inform their voting decision. Uh, those, yes? I forgot how much time we gave to this yesterday. Uh, I'm sorry. Five and five has 10 minutes of debate. Nope, that's a very relevant question. Thank you. Um, okay, those in favor of adjourning for the day, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? And the motion fails. Uh, Todd, if you would like to make your motion to take something up, now would be the time to do it. Uh, blue microphone. Todd Dash off he him move to take D8. Okay, there is a motion to take up D8. Okay, so I'm going to take that as an objection. All those in favor of taking up D8, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? <laughs> Hold on, we're trying to remember how. Remember. I, is, that a two is it two thirds or is it a Reordering the agenda. Okay, I'm going to say that the motion passes, and if somebody wants to appeal the ruling of the chair, they can. Awesome. Okay. The item is D8, short title, no deadline for nominations eligibility on page 10 of your agenda. We have set eight minutes of debate for this item. Um, Joe, were you the maker of the motion? No, you are. Okay, sorry. I hadn't quite gotten there on my agenda yet. So do you wish to speak to it? Then please come to the podium and do so. 
Hello, business meeting. My name is Nicholas White. My pronouns are he, him, and I w was the administrator of the Hugo Awards two years ago, and I am again the administrator of the Hugo Awards last year. Two years ago, I said a silly thing to you. I said the silly thing that I said to you was that it would be better to move the deadline for qualification to vote in nominations phase of the Hugos from the 31st of January to the 31st of December. Uh, the reason I made that proposal was because we were considering a number of potential amendments to the Constitution at that point, one of which was the, the proposed three-stage process for nominations. If that had gone through to facilitate the timescale, it seemed to me as the administrator at that time that it was important to move the deadline back to the 31st of December rather than the 31st of January and give people another month in which to, uh, in, for, for the process to work. Um, my experience now, having been the administrator twice, is that in fact having any deadline at all is somewhat counterproductive. Um, it caused a great deal of, uh, the 31st of December date is particularly bad because it's a point when people are not really concentrating very much on Worldcon stuff for the following summer. It's very difficult for the incoming Worldcon to run a marketing campaign by your membership now to get nominating rights, as had been the case when the deadline was the 31st of January. And from a technical point of view, it turns out actually to be easier to allow people who buy memberships after the deadline, whenever it is, to nominate right up until nominations close than to impose a cutoff at, at some earlier stage. Um, I admit that there is an issue here. We had a problem with entryism in past years. We may have a problem with entryism in future years. Um, basically, I think we shouldn't be running scared of what the bad guys might do to us. I think we should try and run the best awards in the best possible way um, for Worldcon's past, present and future. Um, I commend this amendment to you. It will make life an awful lot simpler for the people who are actually administering the awards. Thank you. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Recognize Terry at the podium microphone. <coughs> My name is Terry Neal and I use she, her pronouns. Um, with all due respect to Nicholas, who I have an immense amount of respect for, um, I have been the Hugo help desk person for two world guns. Um, and we don't get a lot of people emailing uh, in disappointment. We do get some uh, where they try and get into the nominations after the deadline. We are still facing slating. The nebulas were slated this year. It is not a problem that has gone away. And I think if we want the um, best possible Hugo Awards, we need to do what we can to discourage slating and allowing people to buy memberships right up until the nomination deadline is uh, not going to discourage slating. Thank you. That was a speech against. Is there a speech in favor? Um, Ira, at the podium microphone. Uh, my name is Ira Alexandra, pronounced they, them. Um, my argument is economic. Uh, the holiday season, December 31st, um, is a time of uh, economic hardship for many, um, and they will not have money available to buy memberships until January 31st. Thank you, that is a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Um, I'm gonna recognize Joe Van at the podium microphone. One of the arguments made for this when it was proposed was that because of the increased administrative strain um, and the proposal, this proposal was intended to relieve that strain. Part of that strain was caused by the entryism. We have a lot of people still recruiting nominators on Twitter and that December 31st date is keeping that entryism from happening right up to the nominations deadline. If we remove that, we're going to have a lot more of the slating as Terry mentioned. Furthermore, the Christmas issue with finances is only a problem for people the first year that they buy a membership. In subsequent years, if they vote inside selection, they, have, they already have their membership long before Christmas comes around, and it's not a financial hardship. The other part of it that really concerns me is that 
by removing this barrier, we're essentially saying, go ahead, go recruit whoever you want, people who don't care about Worldcon, whose only interest is in nominating a favorite author or work, and I would like the, the Hugo Awards to remain awards given by Worldcon members. Thanks. That is a speech against. Is there a speech in favor? I'm going to recognize Kath in the back, up at the podium microphone. Or do you need a roving mic? No. Okay. Remind me of your name again. I'm Kath Dimmick-Mahaffey, I use she, her pronouns, and th that was just, Joe, I respect your perspective on that considerably, but I buy my membership in January because I don't have funds in the summer to do site selection, and I, this is my first Worldcon, I don't do site selection. Um, I end up buying my membership, and yes, I can vote on either end, for nominations, but you know what? I'm going to recruit as many people as I can to vote for the Hugos, because I believe that the Hugos are the will of the community. This is one of our things that we do as a group. I have been voting in the Hugos now for 10 years, and I, so I always get a supporting membership, and I'm going to recruit as many of my friends who go, wait, I can vote for the Hugos? That on Twitter is the thing I do, and I am proud of it. And the fact that you're saying that recruiting people to vote for the community's awards, these are not given by Locus, these are not given by World Fantasy, these are given by the community. And our best inoculation against the puppies is having people who are opposed to them to vote. Okay. That was a speech in favor. I will remind the body that while applause and affirmations are allowed. They do come out of the debate time for that side. Uh, that was a speech in favor. I'm going to let the secretary finish. I know you gave it to me elsewhere, but I don't have it at the moment. I'm going to, oh, it'll take longer. Thank you so much. Okay. Is there a speech against? Okay, I'm gonna recognize Mr. Pine up at the podium microphone. Mixed chairperson, I move that this proposal be amended by adding a sunset clause for an automatic revote on the 2024 Worldcon business meeting. Sorry, Martin Pine, he, him pronouns. Is there a second? Okay, the amendment has been seconded to add a sunset clause. Due to time, um, I'm gonna ask the head table, because that, I mean, that's, we have to get the wording of, of the sunset clause. Um, do we believe that sunset clauses are standard enough wording that we can add it in and not wordsmith it right now? We just need a year. 2024. 2024? Yep. Okay. Add a sunset clause into 2024. Okay. okay. Is the body clear on what a sunset clause does without needing to wordsmith it and get the exact wording? Or is there anyone that is not clear? Okay. Are you unclear on the sunset clause? So basically, what was does it come before the committee? Automatically. Yeah, if it will, this change will go away after 2024 unless the body makes it stick. So the vote is taken in 2024. Okay. PRK has it. It will come before the 2024 business. Okay. It will. It will. Sorry. Yeah, I phrased that wrong. My apologies. Uh. Apparently, I'm unclear. PRK, he, him, uh, point of inquiry, can you sunset a removal from the Constitution versus an addition? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Kate? Oh. Point of parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, point of parliamentary inquiry, Mixed Chairperson, uh, can we clarify exactly 
what the effect of the sunset clause is it, in terms of it go, just going poof? <laughs> yes, it will go poof. Uh, no. Uh, so I'm going to answer that parliamentary inquiry by saying that it is 1240. Uh, and so I am going to, so that we can just have the wording ready to go for the amendment. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I am going to uh, call us at an order of the day and uh, say that we are adjourned and we will be taking this up tomorrow and we will have the complete proper wording for the sunset clause for everyone to look at tomorrow. Uh, before you go, I want to make sure everyone, everyone knows what's happening tomorrow. So we're going to be taking up this amendment um, and then we're going to be finishing D8. Um, the items we have left to discuss are D7, D9, D10, D11, and D13. The maker of the motion for D13, I hope, I hope we don't need to be here on Monday, but if we do, the maker of the motion for D13 cannot be here on Monday, so yes, I'll get there, sorry. Uh, the maker of the motion of D13 cannot be here on Monday, so I will be uh, with the unanimous consent of the body tomorrow, but I'm just letting you know, I will be asking that we take up D13 after we have completed D8. Um, there is, yes, there is a, um, an, an additional resolution. Um, it is also titled B4 because we have two B4s tomorrow. We have the B4 that is suspend five and six that will be taken up after D7 is completed. Um, and because the, there was a standing rule change and some renumbering. We have an additional B4. We'll call it B4, B4B, or B5 uh, that was distributed today that will be taken up as the last item of business, time permitting. Um, and if the body wishes to take it up, that is what is remaining on the agenda. Well, yes, and so I meant the after site selection is taken care of, that's what we'll be doing. Sorry for not being clear. Thank you everyone for your patience and I will see you all here at 10 a.m. tomorrow.